Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now back in 2013 when the PlayStation 4 launched, online forums were filled with gamers asking about the comparative power of PC. The question of which GPU was equivalent to the PS4 was a common inquiry. There is no exact answer because the PS4 uses a custom APU designed by AMD that is based on a tweaked 7970M, but you'll find that the most common conclusion drawn is that the 7850 or 7870 are the closest on paper to the PS4. Five or six years ago, the 7850 here was still able to achieve decent frame rates in AAA games, with the likes of The Witcher 3, Fallout 4, and GTA 5 running with better than PS4 frame rates at console equivalent or similar settings. Personally, I and I'm sure many of you think trying to directly compare console to PC hardware doesn't make too much sense because the way in which consoles and PCs utilise their hardware differs significantly. But I thought it would be fun to check out the 7850's modern day performance anyway because after all it wasn't too long ago that we looked at its bigger brother, the 78. 70. Now when it comes to newer games, the 7850 reminds me a little of the PS4 in that it's still doing its best to hold on. Games don't always run well and visual sacrifices do need to be made in some instances to hit just 30 FPS, but just like the console, if you bought one of these cards 7 or 8 years ago and you still use it, then it's certainly done you a good turn. Almost a decade of gaming. Of course, if I had to pick between the 7850 and the PS4, I'd choose the PS4 because it will give you a better experience these days. But of course, that is a given thanks to console optimization. For games like Fortnite and GTA 5 though, this will still offer a good experience even at 1920 by 1080 and you should be able to hit 60 FPS with reduced graphical options. Now I don't want to spend too much time on this video, after all we looked at the 7870 not long ago, and the 7850, just like it was years ago, still falls slightly short of that card, though the gap will be closer these days because both are actually held back by the 2GB of VRAM. I hope you've enjoyed this trip down memory lane, it's interesting to think that this graphics card was once considered by many as the PS4 GPU equivalent, even if in reality that probably isn't quite true due to the many technical differences. Over time the performance gap has certainly widened between the two. Should you buy a 7850 or even 7870 in 2021 then? Well as always, price is the main factor worth considering as well as whether or not either card can actually run the games that you want to play. With all that said then, I think it's time to close the lid on the 7800 series from AMD. We have checked out these cards a few times over the years now, and as we move into the next generation of games, they're only getting more demanding. Well, it's going to be interesting to sort of find what the new bottom line is, as it were, for graphics cards and how well they perform in certain titles. Don't get me wrong, the 7800 cards are still capable of gaming in some scenarios, but I like to pinpoint the card that I would consider the bare minimum for playing every game. What card can run every game out there with at least 30 FPS at 1080p or 60 FPS at 1080p? I'm certainly going to try and find out. As for this one then, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Let me know. If you have a 7850 in your system still to this day, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.